Hey guys, Mike Bills here with Measurable Solutions. Uh, I wanted to just talk to you about two things that have been on my mind the last couple of days. Uh, the first one is that Medicare check that we all got or will be getting soon as private practice owners. So, you know, I, I guess my thoughts on this are we want to really get some good data. There's not a whole lot of data out there yet. I know, you know, a lot of you guys, if you've gotten that money already, it came into your account early on Friday or maybe you're getting it today. I know some places in Arizona and things like that hadn't gotten it yet. It's supposed to roll out over the course of the next seven to 10 days. But my advice to you is, number one, read that attestation statement very closely. There's a statement in there. It's really the third bullet point or the third paragraph. Make sure that you're really truly understanding that before you go taking that money and spending that money. Uh, the other thing would be make sure that you really are able to keep some very definitive um, documents and definitive uh, examples and, and use of what you use that money for. So it looks like there is going to be a reporting requirement back at some point in time in the future. Uh, and just like everything that's going on right now during COVID-19, COVID um, you know, we don't really know what those requirements are and we don't really know why that money was dispersed to us. So, you know, that statement, that third statement makes a statement that you're helping patients who are experiencing COVID related diagnoses, COVID related problems, etc. And while the DHS release that came at the same time as your money came into your account states that it has something to do with the fact that your business has been impacted, that is very true, but at the same time, if you're not treating patients directly affected by COVID diagnoses, there could be some requirements that you're going to have to prove what you use that money for, et cetera. So I just want to make sure that you really have a good plan for A, how you're going to use that money and B, for how you're going to most importantly track what you're using that money for. So make sure that before you go spending any of that money, number one, I suggest that just like is going to be a requirement for the payroll protection program money, that you put it into a separate account. And, uh, and that way you can track withdrawals out of that directly. And then also I want to make sure that you really, number one, aren't spending it on same, the things that you would be spending any other loan money on, whether it's an EIDL loan or payment, payroll protection program loan. Make sure, because it isn't a loan, this money that came from Medicare, make sure that you truly understand what you're spending it on and that you're not spending it on the same things um, that you plan to spend that payroll protection money on as well. And then you really think about the fact that Medicare doesn't have an endless supply of money. So if they've given us this money ahead of time and they haven't really determined, A, what are we going to have to report to show that we are that we're using it appropriately um, and spending money that money appropriately, but also what is it going to how is it going to affect things later on? Is it going to affect things from the standpoint of the fact that we're going to see a decrease in reimbursements from Medicare? Um, are they basically giving us an advance payment on things from Medicare? So, you know, so I want to make sure that you guys really think about those things and that you really make sure that you, you know, that you know what the implications of using that money could be before you go using that money. Because if that money is an advance payment, let's say, because it's based on, right, it's based on what you build to Medicare in 2019, and then it's a percentage out of an algorithm for that. But if you don't know what that money really is coming from or where that money really is coming from and you go spending that money, but it's an advance payment on things that they would have paid you towards the end of the year, or if it's a um, if it's a if, if it's if it's money that's coming to you and they're going to reduce what they're paying you in terms of in the future. Well, then great. We're getting that money to help us now. But what about that money that we would have normally gotten, you know, six months down the road or whatever it might be. So make sure that you really think that through and maybe before you go spending it, let's give it a couple more days and find out what's really going on in terms of why did we get this money as physical therapists? I can see where I hospitals and ER departments and urgent care facilities would have gotten the money. But why did we get the money, um, you know, in terms of things that were going on? So really make sure that you're finding out about that and that you're you're thinking through what am I going to do with this money? What if it's an advance payment on Medicare plans? What if it's a what if it's going to reduce by a certain percentage what 
them getting paid by Medicare in the future. Because if we're spending money now that we're going to need in the future as well, definitely something that we want to make sure that we're thinking about. So just make sure that you guys are thinking about those things and then put together a good plan for, okay, I just got this 10000 this 5000 whatever it was. Make sure that you really have an idea of what you're going to use that money for. It's very easy when we get a lump sum of money and we haven't been able to pay bills over the course of the last couple of weeks to jump in and, 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 and pay something. But really think about what is it that that money was intended for. That money was intended for, if you read the DHS documents, the money was intended to be, uh, to be spent on helping you to run your business, not so much spent on payroll and things like that. That's what the payroll protection program loan was for. So if you haven't applied for that, um, go ahead and make sure that you do that. It's not too late. Banks are still accepting applications. There's still plenty of money out there for that program. So if you haven't done that, make sure that you apply for that because that's not what this Medicare um, money that we that we just got or that we will be getting um, is really intended for. It's intended to help you to run your business and to keep things operating over the course of the next couple of weeks. So make sure that you put it towards something that's along that lines. And then, like I said, make sure that you're really reading that document. It's about 12 pages long. Make sure that you read the whole thing uh, before you attest to it. Make sure that you truly do have in your mind, right, an idea of how you're going to track what you're spending that money on. Because guaranteed, it's not free money. The government will come, Medicare will come and want to know what you spent that money on. So whether you break it out line item by line item, I got $5,832 and I spent you know $462 on this and $792 on that, etc. And that's why I say make sure that you put it into a separate account so that you can track the deductions that are coming out of that account and it doesn't get watered down by all the other things that are going on in your, um, in your checking account just on a day-to-day -day basis as well. And really make sure that you've got an idea of what you're going to do with that. Now, if anybody has any questions about the, the Medicare money that just came into our accounts or will be coming into our accounts, you know, here in the next couple of days, feel free to put those below. I'm happy to kind of chat about those as we're, as we're going through, you know, this, this live presentation right now. But again, I just want to make sure that you guys are really thinking about how should I be using that money and what is it that I should be using it on, right? And so it's designed to help you to keep your business operating. So if you would normally be spending that money to, uh, to pay, if you normally would be spending money that you got reimbursed from Medicare to help you to pay for supplies or to help you to pay for rent or to help you to pay for, um, you know, for a loan or something along that lines, this is where you really want that money to go. Keep in mind that that money through the payroll protection program is not designed to really pay mostly for rent and utilities and loans and things like that that you have other obligations for. So use this money that just came from Medicare to help you to do that because it is designed to replace money that you quote unquote lost because you weren't able to pay, you weren't able to see Medicare patients during this time, you weren't getting that reimbursement that you were gonna get, et cetera. Don't go using this money if you have applied for or plan on applying for money through the payroll protection program. Whether you've been given that loan yet or approved for that loan yet or not, don't go using this money from Medicare to, to make that payment for payroll and things like that. That will put you in a violation of that. And be assured that the that the secretary, that the, that the documents that that attestation statement keeps referring to, the secretary of Medicaid basically is going to come and want to know a breakdown of what you spent that money on and how you spent it, et cetera. So be very specific down to the penny. Take that total sum, $8,332 that you got from Medicare, and put it in an account and start subtracting that money from it as you use it to pay for things. But more importantly, before you go doing that, make sure that you've really got a good understanding of why did you get that money? And that may mean that we have to wait for another five or six days or another week or so before we really have a true understanding of why we got that money. Because just like everything else that's happening that the government's doing to try to help small businesses and, and obviously um, you know, medical professionals out, they're giving us these, this money, they're giving us these programs to apply for, but they're still trying to figure things out along the way on their own. So make sure that before you go spending that money, you really have a good understanding of what that money was intended for, because if you feel like you didn't really qualify for that money, guaranteed when they come and ask you for proof of what you spent that money on, and they will do so, then you won't be able to prove it. And then all of a sudden it's going to turn into a loan, even though it says it isn't a loan. 
And the second it turns into a loan, now you're required to pay it back. So again, if you feel like you don't have a good comfort level, I know that we're all struggling as private practice owners to, you know, to pay rent and pay salary and pay loans that we may have, et cetera. But hang on to that money for a couple more days. Let's really get some good data out. Let's see what comes out over the course of this week in terms of what the real intent of that money was for. Keep in mind as physical therapists with your Medicare, Medicare intermediary, whether it's Palmetto or Picos or Trailblazer or whoever it might be, they they qualify us, they, they certify us just the same way that they certify a physician. And so physicians who are open and treating patients with COVID-19 diagnoses, they qualify for that money. But if you read that third paragraph in that document that we all have to attest to, the question is, do we really qualify for that? Because are we really using the money to help to treat COVID-19 patients, which is what it was intended for? And so one of the things that we need to give it a couple of days and see if it happens is they go, oh, wait a minute, we gave that money to people that technically shouldn't have had it, and now you owe it back to us. Or now you're going to have to do these things to prove to us that you were treating COVID-19 patients in addition to the fact that your business was hurt by the fact that there wasn't COVID, that there were COVID-19 effects it had on it. So again, I'm not giving you specific advice to do, but I am saying just like everything else that we've had and seen over the course of the last couple of weeks with any government related program, we really do want to make sure that we give it a couple of days. Let's find out what this money really was for. Did they intend to give it to physical therapists before we go running off and spending it and putting and then putting it all uh, having to put it all into the form of a loan? So I hope that gives you guys a good understanding of what to do with it. Um, hang on to it. Yes, it's there. It's a nice little emergency fund to have. Um, ideally, we will find out that it truly was a gift. That would be great, right? But that way, if we find out that it wasn't a gift and that we actually had to be using it to treat COVID-19 patients, then we can take some time as business owners and figure out, okay, how can I document and justify that I was treating patients affected by COVID-19? I think there will be plenty of ways that we can do that in terms of we can, we, you know, we can send out information. We can make sure that we're showing information that says that we were keeping patients out of emergency emergency rooms by treating them for back pain. We were keeping them out of primary care physicians' offices, allowing those professionals to treat those diagnoses like that had to do with COVID-19 because we were taking care of preventing patients from being in those places. But again, until we know what that's really going to look like and what we're really required to do, we want to make sure that we're, you know, that we're not going and rushing off and spending that money. So let's make sure that we kind of hold on to that money, give it a couple of days. Let's find out what's going on. Let's find out what the real intent of it really was. And, um, and then we can go from there. So I hope you guys are all safe and healthy. Um, you can always reach out to me, private message me. As the president of Measurable Solutions, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you to na navigate all of the COVID-19 things that are going on. We've got some really great uh, webinars that we're doing to help you guys to do that. And, um, and I'm always here to talk and chat privately as well. Feel free to reach out to me. Let's, um, you know, let's all get through this together. That's the whole purpose of things. Let's get through this together and let's make sure that we come out of this on the other side. Yes, the government's going to give us a little bit of help along the way, but it really is going to come down to what do we all do as a profession to help ourselves. So stay healthy, be in touch, and, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, take care. Have a good day.